So what I just say is with God, nothing will be, you said it, impossible. With God, nothing will be impossible. And the record is that, that Jonah is swallowed up. And Jonah in this dark, I assume, dark place, Jonah now, instead of talking to himself and talking to other people, Jonah begins a dialogue with God. That's good. Jonah starts talking to God. Jonah begins a conversation with God, and through this conversation, this prayer, this, it was really a recitation. He, he is mixing in the Psalms with his own words, but you got to know the Psalms to mix them in. But he is mixing in, the, y'all will get that in the morning, he is mixing in the, the Psalms with his own words. So he's going through a difficult situation, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I, he knows the Psalms, I I'll fear no evil. He is rehearsing, reciting the Psalms, and he gets to a point where he acknowledges God for who God is. And the record says that the fish in that recognition released Jonah. And then the record says, and this is beautiful, um, this isn't for people who are perfect. This isn't for people who never messed up. This, this isn't for, for the apostles and the pastors who've been, who've been without sin their whole lives. This isn't, this isn't for, I can't see, this isn't for, for this isn't for everybody. But, but the record says that the word of God came to Jonah. I like that. I like that. I like that. I like it because I like it because I've messed up. I messed up. I, I've messed up one and two and ten and twenty times, and and I'm glad that God never stopped talking to me. I'm, I I like it because God is one who, even in our sin and in our difficulties, God is a pursuer of those whom He loves. That's Bible. The word comes to Jonah again, and Jonah comes out. Jonah comes out with his hands up. Jonah comes out in a surrendered posture. Jo- Jonah comes out, and so you get the title. That's why I named it what I named it, because I grew up watching these TV shows where, where somebody would do what they knew they ought not do. Sometimes they get caught up in the place they did. If they, they went into the local bank branch and they robbed the bank. They couldn't get out good before the police showed up. And so they had to bunker down where they were. And the authority on the outside says, uh, come out with your hands up, with your hands up. Sometimes, and I'll get to your pew, I promise you, sometimes those people, they would flee the bank and they'd make it to a motel room maybe. And they got the cash on them. Amen. I ain't know I was at y'all house already. Amen. And and they would make it to the motel with the money and 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 the authorities would find out where they were located. They they would say, You are surrounded. You you are surrounded. And because you are surrounded, you, my brother, my sister, you need to come on out. You need to come out with your hands up. You 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 need to surrender. I I, I don't care where you are, you need to to come out and sometimes it's the bank and sometimes it's the motel where where you're holding up and and can I come to your pew not your pew your neighbor's pew sometimes it's Bobby's basement he said you got to you got to come on you got to come on oh y'all don't act churchy on me if it ain't now it was then They, they said come on out with your with your hands up God has your life surrounded There's no point of you fighting anymore. God has been too good for you to fight, to push back. God is too powerful for you to oppose him. Won't you just surrender your life? Come out with your hands up. Amen. That was the sermon summarized. But I want to give you some principles as you think about this sermon I want to give you some principles from the text. Can we walk through them? The, the first principle that I want to give you is that uh, Jonah is wrestling in his soul. 
Jo Jonah is wrestling in his soul. We don't know the word that God has given him. Not yet. If you read ahead, you know what God told him. And it really wasn't all that. But Jonah is wrestling in his soul. Not his body. I point that out because um, he's not wrestling in his, in his body. We, we put a lot of focus on our body. But that's not where the fight is. I, I went to the gym this morning, Pastor Mike. I was at the gym this morning. I went to the gym at 6 o'clock, and it wasn't a whole lot of cars, not the number of cars that's there Monday through Friday. I was at the gym 6 o'clock this morning, and there were people in there like me. They were working out their bodies. And I was just, I'm just walking the weight of pain. I'm just, I'm just walking. And they pulling themselves up and they twisting themselves and they jumping on the floor, popping back up. They bent in a pretzel. They're doing all kinds of things to strengthen their bodies. And I'm not hating on it. I was in there too trying to do what I could do. Step master, just one step at a time. And I don't want to ever get to the point where I can't walk up some steps. Amen. So I said, okay, you just got to do one step at a time. Level one, one step for real. I did it. I walked 15 floors, one step at a time. Amen. But everybody was working out their body. I knew I was coming here. I knew I had labored last night and all during the week. I knew I had been meditating in the morning. I said, but what about their souls? I don't know. Maybe they, maybe they was going to mass after they left the gym. Like I was coming to the church after I left the gym. I don't know. I highlight it because we don't always think about our soul. Soul care. An hour at the gym. A minute in prayer. An hour at the spa. A minute in prayer. He has a soul condition. I know it because later when it's time for him to die, he's ready to die. He's ready to give up that body. He don't care about his body. He tells them later, y'all get rid of me. I, I'm, I'm good with being gone. I don't need to be here. But, but what about his soul? David says, nobody, nobody cared for my soul. Can you imagine that? David in the Psalms, he says, no, no man cared for my, for my soul. They care about my money. They care about what I could do for them or what I can't do for them. They care about whether I help them or I don't help them. They care what I look like when I come out. Always tell them, you need to straighten that. You need to, you need, why are you wearing your hair like that? They, they care about some things, but there was nobody who gave me soul care. And that's why you want to be connected to a church because you need soul. You need soul care. You, you, you need to care. You need to care for your soul. He is, he is troubled in soul to the point that he is sleeping during a storm. And my second point is it's a storm that God sent. Y'all like that? I don't always like that. I have to, I, when I'm in a storm, I have to pause. The first thing I do is try to get out as quick as I can. As fast as I can. I'm trying to get out. <laughs> Rescue me. <laughs> Lord, help me. People, help me. But you got to know where did the storm come from? It, did I create the storm? You do know that you can cause some storms in your own life. God was with you. God told you what to do. God gave you direction. God surrounded you by people and you just went your own way and you found yourself in the storm that you created. Jonah is kind of like that. He, he was disobedient, but the record says that God sent the storm. I just want to pause and tell you that God sends storms. And if it's a God sent storm, it's good that I talk to my brother. It's good that I talk to my sister. It's nice to have friends. It, it's good to consult Google to understand the storm that I'm in, but I, I might want to talk to God if it's a God-sent storm. And 
he's in a storm, and it's one thing, third point, it's one thing for the storm that God sends to mess up your life. Amen. Y'all ever see people on the highway, they driving crazy. I'm slowing down. I'm like, y'all forgive me. Like, if you want to flip, roll, like, you do your thing. But stay away from me. Right? You're, you're in a public place and people loud, raised voices. And, and they, clearly, they are not having a good time. But mess up your time. Don't, don't mess up mine. Y'all with me? But but here is the indictment. Here is the, it, it's a sorrowful tone in the text. The, the, the record is that the storm was meant for Jonah, and yet it impacts everybody connected to Jonah. Y'all see it in the text? In plain language, our disobedience affects what's connected to us. That's sobering. I don't want to leave you low, but it's sobering to think, and I said it last week, that, that my disobedience as a man affects my wife, because I'm not just a man, I'm a husband. My, my disobedience, I'm not talking about your disobedience, just my disobedience as a man affects my children, because I'm not just a man, I'm a, I'm a father man. I, I got children who are who are dependent on me. My, my, my disobedience affects everything connected to me. My, my disobedience, it affects y'all. Because I'm not just a man and a husband and a father, but I say that I am one who has been called of God to shepherd the very people of God, to, to watch over them as a good under-shepherd. My disobedience affects everything that I'm connected to in the text. These men are affected. They are fighting the storm. And it's interesting when your disobedience or somebody else's disobedience affects others around them, sometimes it's like they're clueless to it. Y'all got family like that. They don't realize what they're putting everybody through. Maybe you were them. You don't realize what you're putting everybody else through. Because you're so so much in a sorrowful state or they're, they're, they're so much in a sorrowful state that while y'all all working to try to fix it, they're, they're sleeping and they're just wasting away. Now y'all say, don't Geraldine know that we doing all of this because she didn't do what she was supposed to do with them kids. Dude, we're doing all of this because Bennett wouldn't go to work. We're doing all of this because of what they failed. It's their disobedience. And they're sleeping. But don't judge them too harshly because sometimes we're the sleeper. Yeah, sometimes we're the sleeper and sometimes we're so sorrowful that it's us who's, who's making it hard on everybody else. Some, sometimes it was us who was short-sighted. Some, sometimes it was us who didn't trust God. Sometimes it was us who heard the very voice of God and went the opposite way. So they are working and they're trying to get... They're trying to get him uh, awakened. They're trying to figure out what's going on. And here it is. The record is they are throwing away their cargo. Anybody go to the grocery store this weekend? Anybody? Last weekend. Y'all had to eat last week. Amen. Some of y'all went to the store. Anybody been to the mall? Y'all bought some clothes? Amen. Penny's, Marshall's, TJ Maxx. Y'all been somewhere? Walmart. Amen. Amen. Imagine you got all your stuff, and because somebody else acting a fool, you got to, you just went to the grocery store, you got to throw it out the window. You just, you just went to the mall, you got to throw it out the window. You are losing things because of the disobedience of somebody else. Losing your peace, because you waiting up to figure out where your brother is and is he coming home and he's still on the street? Is she going to get cleaned up or is she not going to get cleaned up? Your son, you, you raised him. He got plenty of sense. Grandma, he got plenty of sense and ain't using a lick of what he got. 
and you lose things. They are throwing things overboard because disobedience in our lives affects everything that's connected to us. But when you're in a moment like this, my, my fifth point, you got to figure out um, who's responsible. Amen. We got to get to the bottom of who's responsible. Somebody responsible, right? Somebody did something for us to be in the circumstance we're in. And maybe it's you and maybe it's me and maybe it's a little bit of both. But we got to figure out what's going on here. And you heard it. They cast lots. And Lot failed to Jonah. Somebody's responsible. We're in a culture now where nobody's responsible for anything. Nobody. Nobody wants to be responsible for anything. Not y'all, y'all at church. People don't even join churches now because they don't want to be. If I join you, I'm connected to you. And now I feel responsible. Right? Right? People, people want to come to the party. But when they ready to go, they want to get their to-go plate. Don't leave that. They will tell y'all bye. 20 times, and then they they are out the door because what, we wash some dishes, take out the trash after the party, vacuum, sweep the floor. The hosts in the house, they like, yeah, we know, we've been, we've been there. And the men began to ask Jonah a series of questions. I want you to hear the question because we started last week, this week, with telling us who Jonah is. They said, What is your job? What is your profession? Isn't that an interesting question to ask a prophet? It is something about who you are. You, you are not a sailor, clearly, because you ain't helped a lick get us out of this storm. What do you do? I think it was a way of calling Jonah to, to the carpet to look himself in the mirror. Who am I really? They don't know who he is, but he knows who he is. So when Jonah looks in the mirror, Jonah sees, I'm a prophet of God. What does a prophet do? A prophet hears from God. And then the prophet declares that which God has given the prophet to the people. That's it. That's what a prophet, that, that's the ABCs of what it means to be a prophet. Who are you? And sometimes we forget who we are. Who are you? Well, some of you may say, well, I'm a mother. Some of you may say, I'm a father. Some of you may say, I'm a, I lead a, a team. I'm a, I'm a manager. I'm a supervisor. Can I get real more basic than that? When you look in the mirror, my prayer is that when you look in the mirror before title or relationship comes to mind, that when you look in the mirror, you, you see first and foremost, I'm a child of God. Simple life, but I'm a child of God. I'm created in the image of God to do what? Bring glory to God. So I might be a mother, so I bring glory to God through my mother. And I might be a father, I bring glory to God through my father. And I might be in community in my, my church. I bring glory to God through being in my community. I might be some people's friends or belong to a club. I bring glory to God. I am a child of God. Who are you and where are you from? And who are your people? All questions designed to point Jonah back to who he is. I'm a prophet of the true and the living God of a chosen people that God has stood up for a purpose in the earth. That ought to be your declaration. Your profession may be different from mine. Your vocation may be different from mine. But we have the same call about who we are. Don't forget who you are. Y'all with young people, that's a good question to ask when they be bringing people over to the house. Hey, who are you really? Where are you from? Who are your people? Them are some good questions, aren't they? And, and, and we're not looking to see if they come from privilege or from money or influence or for power. We want to see, do they recognize that they are created by the true and the living God 
that they are a set apart and sanctified people. Because when you deal with mine, that's who I'm telling them they are. And I just want to know where y'all at. We all sinners. I just want to know who I'm dealing with. Sixth point, and I'm almost done. Disobedience, disobedience will have you despise the life that God has given you. Isn't that something? God gives you a life. You can't be everywhere. You can't be everything. I just told you you were created in the image of the living God. You're, you can't have the features of everybody that you or the world would deem to be beautiful, acceptable, noteworthy. You can't have all of the, the, the skills, the, the abilities of everybody. You, you, you don't have the time of everybody. You, you don't have the talent or the treasure of everybody. You've just been given a life. And when you and I walk in disobedience, we can despise. We, we, can, we can just throw that life away. I was, at, um, I was at a little cocktail hour last night. And I just had water. Cocktail hour. I only had one cup of water. Couldn't do the calories. Amen. The calories, I couldn't do the calories. I had one cup of water. It was uh, Camden had his little prom last night. And they had a little parent party while the kids was having a party before the party. I don't know how y'all, not y'all, but people get party. They had a party before the party, then a party, then a party after the party, then a party after that. I'm up at four looking for my, I was tracking him, looking for my son. Amen. I knew where he was. Amen. And there were some parents. They had had the pre-party, and that's all it was supposed to be. Parents come and look at y'all little kids, take pictures, and y'all go on now. But it was some parents, they was like, we are kicking it tonight. <laughs> we kicking it. They going to be gone all night. And this is 40-something, 50-something parents. We going to Chevy's tonight. And then after Chevy's, we going to go over to so-and-so house. You going to let us come over? Yeah, it, it, they ready to kick it. It's, they kicking it. And they said, you coming? <laughs> I said, no, I ain't coming. <laughs> What you mean you ain't coming? I said, no, I ain't coming. I got to go to work. That's what I told them. I got to go to work. They say, you are no fun. I said, you're right. <laughs> you're right. <laughs> Not that kind of fun. Y'all go have y'all kind of fun. But but I think my, my people at the church, would, they may not really be impressed if I show up hungover, full of guacamole. And chip and dip in the morning. That, now somebody got to declare the word of God to the people of God. And so if that means I ain't fun, I just ain't fun. Y'all fun, y'all go have fun. But I don't despise my life. I don't walk away, ooh, I'm no fun. This is the life that God gave me. So why y'all kicking it? I'm making sure I got the word of God for the people of God. Why y'all kicking it? Go kick it. I'm going to kick it sometime, just, just not tonight. Because I treasure the life God gave me. Because you ain't going to want me hungover when I have to give final words over your lost loved one. You ain't, you ain't going to want me filled with all of that stuff and tired if when, when, when I'm offering you communion, you're, you, you, you're not going to want me to teach from, from a well that is not full. So you go do what you do. This is my life. God gave you a life. Don't despise your life. You ain't got to be what everybody else is. Do what everybody else do. God called you to a particular life. Guess what, Jonah? God called you to go tell people stuff that maybe you don't want to tell them. But you do what God has called you to do. He despises what God has created, what God has called so much that he says, you know what? Y'all just, y'all throw me over the ship. Because I don't want to be what God created me to be. At least not when what God want me to say don't line up with what I want to say. Come here, mother. 
being a mother is a hard thing. Ooh, being a mother is a hard thing. And God calls some women into being a mother. And so you have to put on some things. You have to carry some things. You, you, you have to explain to, a, to a somebody like me who, who say, can cramps the kids over there? Can cramps be that bad? Like, I, I've experienced discomfort before, and, and they have no idea what you're going through. Jonah says, I don't want this cup. Y'all get rid of me. But here it is. They were like us. <laughs> My seventh point. I got three more. Quick. I'm done. People will love you more than you. Where do you see it in the text? The record says he tells them who he is. He tells them, I'm running from the presence of God. They say, okay, it's this fella. It's his God. They start talking to God. Now, they are pagans. They, they don't know the true and living God. But, but they have this experience where they're not crying out to God. They, he says, throw me over. They say, no. They start rowing harder. If you read your Bible... It never says he helped them do anything. They, they start rowing harder because they're trying to save Jonah. Sometimes we can love people so much that we just row. We just row it. We just fight. We'll, we'll get up early. We'll go to bed late if we got to. We'll give them our bill money. We know we got bills. But we'll we'll pay their bills because they just need to they just need to get it together, right? We'll inconvenience ourselves to the point where where we have neglected ourselves because we're rowing, we're trying to save them. To save it's it's a good thing to save somebody. It's a good thing. It's a good thing not to abandon somebody. We're just rowing. We're just rowing. But here it is. You're rowing against God. You can't row against God. Pastor, you telling me don't look out for my brother? I never will tell you that. Pastor, don't look out for my sister? I never would tell you that. Pastor, don't help my mom and them or my cousin and them? I would never tell you that. All I'm saying is you need to be spiritual enough to know when God is at work. And if God is at work, then I'm going to get my hind self out of the way. If God is at work, that's between you and God. I'm going to pray for you. I'm going to encourage you. But I'm going to let God do what God do. Because God is at work. I can't fight God for you. I wouldn't dare fight God for you. I wouldn't even try to fight God for you. God is at work. And there's some people in our lives. Don't do it in your flesh because you won't know when to hold on and when to let go. You, you won't know when to push and when to refrain. But you got to do it in the spirit. You got to say, Lord God, this is your child. You made him. You know all about her, God. You, you know the situation. Lord, this may be a storm that you're sending them through to work out something in them. And if it is, I need you to speak to me because I ain't pushing, I ain't pulling, I ain't doing nothing but getting up out the way and praying for them. They fighting against that storm. They fighting against that storm. And he said, he said, y'all, let me go. And if they had, it's hard. I've done it at moments in my life. I'm not the example. The spirit will guide you and direct you. Not the example. I just know when I've had to let people go for God to work it out in his own timing. Because we think we can, if we just keep our hands on them, then we can make it all right. If, if, if we just... If, if we just let them keep leaning on us, we, we can make it all right. If, if we just keep picking up the phone every time they call, we can make it all right. You can't make a storm that God sent them through all right. Sometimes you got to release them to God. Amen. Let God show himself to be strong. Let, let God show himself to be mighty. Let God show himself to be powerful. That's where you get your testimony from. Let it never be said that somebody rescued me. God rescued me. 
might have used somebody, but God lifted me up. God put my feet on the solid ground. God gave me a right mind. God put peace in my heart. Let God work in them like he working in you. They release him. There's a time where we must turn over others over to God. And when they release them, the record says the storm ceased. Now hear it. You've seen it. I don't have to preach it. When you release the storm that was battering you, buffeting you, tossing you, the storm lifted for you. The storm was over. There, there, there's no more wind and wave. There, there's no more water coming overboard. The storm is over. But what about Jonah, pastor? My heart big like y'all's. I'm with you. What about Jonah? God got Jonah. Y'all want to know how second to last point. Uh, 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 God has Jonah because God has a way. Ooh, this is this is a shout. God has a way of rescuing us through remarkable ways. Ooh, I like it, I like it, I like it. God's ways are not our ways. His thoughts are not our thoughts. God has a way of rescuing. Where do you see that in the text? The record says that God appointed a fish to swallow Jonah up. You say, Pastor, that don't sound like rescue to me. He got, he got swallowed up. He, he swallowed up, Pastor. What do you mean that's a, that's a rescue? He got swallowed up. You right. In a dark place. In an isolated place. I told you, I just trust God. I don't know how God did it. I just know that in the beginning, there was the word and God made everything. And without him, nothing was made that has been made. In, in him is life. And, and that life was the light. I, I, I just know that God is God. That, that God can, can do exceedingly and abundantly above all that we can ask or think or imagine. I don't know how it happened. But here it is. He's in a, he's in a fish that God appointed to swallow him up dark place, isolated place, by himself, only person he could talk to is God. Hear it, because we got these people in our families and in our lives. What you think, what you think is a terrible place is actually the place that God appointed what, what, yeah, 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 that, oh, it, it's, yeah, yeah, amen to that, pastor. What you think is a dark place, maybe the place appointed by God. I'll give y'all a quick hit, and my last point, we're going to shout, we gone. Here it is. I, I went last year, me and Case, we went to the federal courthouse in St. Louis. Uh, my little cousin was being sentenced. Amen. Federal court. They let us in the courtroom. They said, the United States federal government versus, then they read a name, his first name, and they said Miller, and I, ooh, I cringed. I said, I said, ooh, that's my name. I didn't like that. I, I didn't like hearing, I, I care about my cousin. I was there for him, support, wrote the letter, did all that, showed up, brought my son with him. But when I heard my name called, I said, oh, no, Miller. Mr. Miller, will you please stand up? Mr. Miller, do you have anything to say for yourself? Mr. Miller, is there anything that I see you got some people here in, uh, here in the courtroom with you? Mr. Miller, Mr. Miller, it, it messed me up, and there were some sorrowful people in that courtroom. I had family members crying. judge could have been lenient. He wasn't lenient. He gave him the due penalty of his sin. Amen. Praise God. That's, as a society, that's what we want. The due penalty. I, I just praise God that God ain't like some of y'all should be praising him too that he ain't like the state of Missouri, like the U.S. federal government, like the state of Illinois. I, I praise God that his mercy is everlasting. I, I, I praise God. And so they were talking, and they gave him all the time they could give him. And here's all I said. Praise God. Praise God. Love you, cousin. Keep your head up. We'll write you. We'll put some money on your books. 
But praise God. Why? Because you got to go through your go through. You, 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 God has appointed this for you. Hold up. Why are you saying that, Pastor? Because I, I eulogized. I eulogized his baby brother a couple years before that. I eulogized his baby brother, so I say, y'all think a prison cell is a bad thing? Do, do you not know we were just saying ashes to ashes and dust to dust? And if he stay out here, he ain't no tell. I might be saying ashes to ashes and dust to dust. So if God has appointed a prison cell to get you together, make you right, have you fit for the fight, then praise God for it. Sometimes it's a prison cell. Sometimes it's sicknesses. And sometimes you're being stretched. And sometimes it's a layoff. And sometimes it's a demotion. Sometimes it is a new job that's harder than you thought. But whatever it is, God will appoint things to bring you in alignment. So don't despise the fish. Because here it is, I'm done. He's, he's praying in the fish. gets to the point where he says, God, I know I ran from you, but you alone are God. He tells God, you are, you are good to me. I know I'm in an uncomfortable place, never been in a fish before, don't know if or how I'm coming out, but you appointed it for me, so I'm going to sit where you put me until you work out in me what needs to be worked out in me you are good god somebody needs to shout that today you you are you have been swallowed up but god you doing something right now you talking to me right now god i you ain't never talked to me like this before and i see your goodness and your kindness i see just how merciful and wonderful you are i know i don't like this dark place but you alone you are god and the record is that fish that fish let him go. He ran to God instead of away from God. That fish released him. And here's all I want to say to you. I gave y'all 10 points. It felt like it, I know. It felt like it, but here it is. When you come out, when you come out, because here it is, you gonna come out. No, I got to, I got to say that. <laughs> you gonna come out. He that has begun a good work in you shall, he shall finish what he started in you. You're going to come out. But it, I'm dead, Pat. No, you're not. Lazarus, come on out. Pastor, I'm, I'm cutting myself. Come here, you demoniac. Come on out. Peter, I ain't good for nothing else, God. Just, hey, man, I denied you, Jesus. I denied you. I ain't fit for the fight no more. No, Peter, come on out. You gonna come out. You gon' I gotta tell it to somebody because cause grief will have you thinking you ain't coming out. And when your ends don't meet, you'll think it'll never get, they'll never meet up again. You you when your body fails you, you'll think I'm never coming out. Ooh, but you're coming out. But when you come out, hear me, hear me. Don't play with this part. When you come out. Come out, come out with your hands up. Oh, come, come out with, with your hands up. Ooh, what's that there? Come out with your hands up. I surrender. I surrender my way to your way. I surrender. I know I can't be trusted, God, but right now I surrender. I, I surrender all. I surrender all. What I wanted, I surrender. What I do with my time, I surrender. All those goals I wrote down, it's good, it's good to have them, but God, I surrender them to you. What I got left, I, I surrender it to you, God. I'm coming out with my hands up. I ain't got nothing in my hands, but if I put my hand in your hand, walk with you and talk with you. I know I can make it out. I'm coming out. I surrender all. All to Jesus. I surrender. Songwriter said all to him. I, I freely give. 
God, you ain't got to take nothing from me no more. You ain't got to send another, another storm to get my attention. All to Jesus. I freely give. I will ever, I will always. I love you, Lord. I know I love me a lot. I'll always love you. I'll always trust you. Your ways are better than my ways. Your thoughts are higher than my thoughts. I surrender my body to you. Present your body as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. If any man would come after me, let him lay down his life that, that he may take it up again. I, I surrender all. I surrender my treasure to you. My paycheck is yours. My 401k, my 403b, my IRA is yours. Because the cattle on a thousand hills belongs to you. Because you have the power to pour out a blessing that I, I don't have room enough to receive. I surrender. I surrender anxiety and worry to you because you never told me to be anxious. You said be anxious for nothing. But pray about everything. With thanksgiving, I surrender. I surrender all. I surrender all. Somebody in the house needs to cry out. I'm coming out. I'm coming out. Bless your name, God. You have to go from talking about God to talking to God. Bless your name, God, for being loving, kind, gracious God. Thank you for being a God who, who lifts us up out of a pit, out of the miry clay. You set our feet on solid ground. We surrender ourselves to you today. Bless your name. Bless your holy name. There may be somebody in here, as our counselors come, you've never surrendered your life. Stay where you are, please. You've never surrendered your life. Your life. Your life to God. Let today be, be the day. Come out. If you stand up, you come today. If you're in this space, you never surrendered your life. Your life. Today is the day. Won't you come? If you're online with us right now, you can say, I'm coming out. We'll reach out to you. If you're, you're saved, you say, I've just been separated. Come out. Come on back home. Come on back home. It's warm inside. We got some soup on the stove. Come on home. It's good. It's good. Psalmist says, taste and see. It's good. Come on home. Wherever you are in the house, you can raise your hand. They'll come to you. If you desire prayer, raise your hand. They'll come to you. Those who are surrendering their lives to Jesus. Those who know Jesus, but you've been away from home. Come on. Those who desire prayer, raise your hand. They'll come to you. Bless your name, God.
just here praying that you may be uh, you may finish our prayer meeting. Other counselors, you may be seated. Uh, we praise God for his word. Amen. Bless your name, God. We bless your name. We thank God for his word. Uh, we thank you for your presence here today. Amen. Uh, Pastor Michael has given the announcement. Uh, I do want to, uh, though, share or remind for those who may uh, have already heard, uh, share that uh, today at 3 p.m., uh, the Mount Sinai uh, Missionary Baptist Church here in East St. Louis will be installing their new pastor, uh, Pastor Herman Watson, uh, as many of you know, retired, and Pastor Corey Harris, amen, is now the uh, elect pastor over at Mount Sinai. Uh, I'll be over there with them this afternoon. Uh, I'm, I'm praying, I'm declaring, I'm, I'm claiming it that I am just giving the charge to the pastor, that I am just giving the charge to the pastor. And I joke because I'm the ultimate. Uh, and some of y'all are like, what ultimate? That's what Takiyah said. What do you mean you're the ultimate? I said, well, if the pastor who's supposed to preach doesn't show up, sickness, tired, was at Chevy's last night, um, <laughs> then I'll preach in his stead. Amen. But I'm praying, and I'm praying Pastor Owens Jr. will be there live and in color. Amen. So I could just sit back like y'all and eat some good food from the word of God. Amen. But uh, I'll be over there. Uh, I know folks have things to do. So uh, if you don't show in person, if you would just pray for Pastor Harris and that church. Uh, transitions are always, uh, no matter how beautiful and blessed they are, they are always challenging. Amen. So we pray his strength, and we pray that the Spirit of God would lead uh, that church to where God wants them to be. Amen. A uh, reminder about the homegoing celebration memorial service for our departed sister, Ramona Blank Smith. Uh, it will be this Saturday. Sister Cher, start time is 11 a.m. Amen. We are uh, having a memorial here, uh, recognizing and celebrating her life. Amen. I think that's it. I'm I'm going to let y'all go. Amen. So I can get to Chevy's before 3 o'clock. Amen. I'm kidding. Won't y'all stand? Won't y'all stand? Amen. Amen. Smile at somebody. Uh, our ushers are at the rear. Our ushers are at the rear. Uh, we're going to give church anniversary. We're going to give a report out of our uh, first fruits offering. Thank you for your faithfulness in giving. Those who've been able to give. Those who still desire to give, give as the Lord gives it to you to give. Amen. But we'll give a report out at our church anniversary service uh, at the end of this month. It'll be during our morning worship experience. All right, I offer you this blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you. And wherever you go this week, whatever you do, whatever joy you experience, whatever sorrow you and I must endure, my prayer is that the Lord will give you peace. It's peace that I leave you with. In Jesus' name, let the church say amen. Amen. Amen.